right, well, thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. It's good to see you for the first time this year. And uh, it's awesome to uh, be together and uh, worship God. And we're excited to kick off a new year here together. And we're starting a new series kind of over the next, kind of first half of the year called Greater Love. And I'm going to get into that more in a minute. But a couple of announcements here as I get uh, started. For those of you who have been uh, are really calendar people, we're going to have our Google Calendar done for the year by, the, by this Sunday. So if you've been looking at it, it hasn't been up to date, it'll be up to date by this Sunday for the year for all of you. And then also, every year we've served in a, in a Martin Luther King Day of service the Saturday before that Monday. And, well, not every year, because a couple years ago we didn't. And then this year, again, it's not really going to work for our partner agencies during this time. So we've talked to them about putting that off for another couple months. But just wanted to let you know, in case you were holding that weekend, you can uh, unhold it. And uh, we'll let you know with plenty of time as we get started. But we look forward to uh, serving uh, in the community, not just for these big events, but as we start the new year and everything is, is good to go there. So this year, 2022 is beginning. Who's ready to get rid of 2021? A lot of hands. A lot of hands went up there. OK, me too. How many people have resolutions? I mean, it's already the second. You know, you got to have them. I don't have too many. I just have a couple. I talked to uh, Lacey in Kids Kingdom. She's got 10. Yeah. I was like, wow, you are the resolution champion of the church, right? <laughs> uh, so she is fired up. Hopefully, we're going to get more and more excited about the new year. I'd say a couple, probably last week, I, this is how I felt about the new year. I was like, let me just touch my toe in the water and kind of see how it was going to be. I don't know if you felt that way. Like, ah. I thought we we're going to be done with all this COVID stuff by this year. And I'm just kind of like, oh, another year of this. But I think it's been a week. I'm getting more and more excited. If hopefully, I see some heads nodding out there. Hopefully, this is going to help you get more and more excited for the new year. I don't know if this was on Lacey's list, but this one might have been on Teddy's. New Year's resolution, be awesome. Check. OK. so. Hopefully, uh, you all feel awesome. God thinks you're awesome. You already got one resolution. Done. That's incredible. And uh, we'll have to check Ted's list when he's here and, and uh, find out that's on there. But our theme for this series is John 15, 13. Greater love has no one than this, than he lay down one's life for one's friends. That is just an amazing scripture that Jesus embodied, not just when he went to the cross, but every day of his life. And so the idea of growing in our love for one another, growing in our love for God, and laying down our lives, not just for our fellow parishioners, but for our friends. And really being a friend of God, like the song we sang, and being friends in a greater way with one another. So we are excited uh, as we get started the year to have conversations and just help us to grow in our love for one another. Help us to grow in our love and trust in God and in our first love and really connecting to one another. I pray that this year we can grow in being spirit led, that we don't just go through the motions. We don't just check spiritual boxes, but we're allowing God to lead us. And I also pray as we start the year that we put God in his rightful place first in our lives. That we get up thinking about Jesus. That we go to bed thinking about Jesus. That throughout our day that we're walking with Christ and bringing that love to the world. I know that we have grown in our love for one another in the past couple of years. And I pray that we can continue to grow in our connection for one another. That it's not just about showing up, but it's about being connected. And even if we're online or we're not able to be there, we're still in communication. We're still connected and, and talking with one another. I pray that this year we have many conversations of just, how am I doing? How are you doing? 
What's going on? What are you struggling with? How is God working in your lives? What can I pray for you for? How can we love one another deeper? And not just people that we already get along with, but maybe people that we have a harder time with. That we will make a decision as a church that we, if we have issues with someone, we're going to talk to that person. We're not going to talk to our neighbor. We're going to go and talk to them. We're going to talk things through. We're going to be a church that grows in our love for one another. And through that, we get closer and closer to each other. Amen, church? So this year, as you're starting your year, you may need a few different things in your toolbox as you get started. And I use that word toolbox for a reason. I'm going to share three house projects that I had to do over the break and how they might relate to your New Year's resolution. You might not see the connection, but hopefully you will. The first one, you, you won't know what that is quite yet, but we have a little drink refrigerator in our house. And when you open it, it says it's 34 degrees. But when you take a sip of the drinks that are in there, it's about 65 degrees. <laughs> and so over the holidays, we had some people over, and you know uh, they were taking a drink out of their drink. And they're like, oh my gosh, do you have ice for your refrigerated drinks? These things. Is... So then my family, in as loving a way as possible, everybody starts just piling on about how terrible the fridge is, how long it's been broken, all these things. So. Uh, the next day, not really because I wanted to, but because they pressured me into it. All right, I'm going to fix this refrigerator. And so the technical term for it is recalibrating the system. The practical term is I unplugged it and plugged it back in. <laughs> it was like that for, I don't know, maybe two months. Unplugged it, plugged it back in, like six hours later. 34 degrees on the drinks. I was like, why didn't I do that sooner? That was so easy. So for some of us, as we come out of the holidays spiritually, it's like that. Maybe you've been flat for a couple weeks. You, you've been out of it for a month. You know, it's, you just got to unplug yourself to go, and just plug yourself back in, recalibrate everything, and you're just like back in action. You're ready to go. Easy fix. And so today's the day to do it, okay? If you need the recalibrate yourself with God, just kind of realign and just keep going for the new year. The second one was a problem that I caused and had to fix. So the other one was a little different. As we were taking down some of the flowers, anybody know much about flowers where sometimes you put like a penny in there and it keeps them from wilting? Anybody know that? It's a thing. Look it up. It's a thing. Okay, for certain, I don't know which kinds of flowers, but Gerber daisies and what? Tulips and Gerber daisies, there you go. You wonder why they don't work for you? You don't put a penny in. So I'm emptying it out, and I hear the penny come out of the thing, and there was one in the sink. I thought that was the only one, and the other one went in the disposal, oh. right? So clinked around a few times, and then the next thing I know, it wasn't working. So I had to take it out, try to fix it, got it to fix, I was pretty proud of myself. I got it back in. Right before I went to put it in, it's like six inches off the ground, and I, I dropped it onto a mat, and it seemed like it was going to be fine. Then I put it back in, and it starts just slowly leaking out of the bottom. There's no crack. I don't know where this is coming from. It's just done. So maybe some of us, as we're going into the new year, it's not a total disaster, but we're kind of leaking. Right? There's areas of our lives that just, it's not, we're trying to hold it together. It's not going real well. And for those parts of our lives, there's only one solution, as there was for me. You got to throw it in the garbage. That's a picture of my garbage can outside. That was the old disposal that we had to take out, put, put it in. I say we, meaning me, but it... It was a pretty good feeling when you get it all out, you get it back in, it works, no leaks. I'm not a handyman, sorry, Poncho. Poncho probably is laughing at me right now that this is like handyman 101. But for some of us, there's certain parts of your lives that you just need to throw out, that you've tried to fix it long enough, 
and you just need to like start over. You're like, man, my, my quiet times, they just are terrible right now. I've been trying to do this. Just try something else. You know, my relationships, they're, they're struggling. I need to just, just restart them. You know, throw out the old, start over. You get the idea. Um, and for my third project, I don't know if you guys are even enjoying these projects, but I'm having fun telling you about them. I don't know if you're having fun, but I'm having fun up here. OK, so the third project, oh, wow, those pictures, it's hard to really know what that is, but you'll understand in a second. My hill in the back of my house was a total disaster. Like, when I was done with this project of the hill, I was thinking, why have I been paying my gardeners? And then my wife reminded me, they're really cheap. That's why you don't get rid of them. OK, I understand. <laughs> But you know, when it rains is the only time that you can re-sculpt your sand hill, right? So Christmas Eve, we had the big rain. I got up in the morning, and I'm sitting there, and I'm looking outside. And I'm going, you know what? This is my only chance. I got to get out there. So I'm getting out on the hill, fixing everything, you know, spreading out, covering up all the netting that's showing. There's like leaves and flowers and all kinds of junk over there. And so finally, I won't, I won't bore you with all the details. My son's favorite part of the project, it's like 10 minutes from finished. I'm walking on the edge on this wall, and I fall into the pool <laughs> with a full shovel full of dirt. <laughs> right? So I just, the whole thing, I mean, it was like fully submerged. Connor, Connor didn't even laugh, right? I got to give it to him there, because he wasn't sure if I was going to come out happy or if I was going to come out just ticked off. And so he's silent, and I hear Danielle from inside the house laughing. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I thought that was going to be Connor. And so what I, learned, what I learned from this, what does this have to do with anything? Sometimes we don't wait to fix something until it's an emergency. Until the rains come and there's like about a 24-hour window that we even will be humble enough to get help. The rest of the time, we just cover it up and we pretend like nothing's wrong. And then when that rainstorm comes and it just blows up, we finally go, you know what? I need help. And there's a short window. This is emergency. And it's good to help people in that time because that's their, their, their crying out. You know, Jesus doesn't say, well, you didn't ask for help before. I'm sorry, you're just going to have to suffer. No, he helps us in our times of need. So maybe you are that person waiting for the rains to come. That you didn't come in here planning on getting help, but you're, at some point you're just waiting for it to blow up when you really need it. And I would just encourage you, don't wait you know, I could have gone back and sprayed the whole hill with, with water myself and taken care of it instead of waiting for the rain. So I would encourage you to do that as you're thinking about your New Year's resolutions. I am personally excited. I'm going through a devotional book for the entire year. And it has, like, old prayers that people prayed, like, thousands of years ago as a part of it. And old songs that people sang from all different, all around the world. I'm really excited to go through that and to continue to incorporate Sabbath into my life and continue to grow in trust there, and to have a weekly time of prayer uh, called the Beloved, where I pray about God, Jesus being fully loved, me being fully loved, and all of us being fully loved by God. And so that's all I got. I can't beat Lacey. I just got three for right now. But I know that when we start changing whatever it is that God works, as long as we're looking for him. So I pray that you are looking for God this year. Let's say a prayer, and then we're going to jump into John 13. Uh, Father, we do thank you so much for just a chance to have a restart. God, I know that every day is a great day to change for you, but these certain moments give us an opportunity to consider how we can grow and how we can be different and how we want to make our, our new year uh, pleasing to you. God, I pray for this sermon. I pray for this time that you open up our hearts, you open up our word, that you can really move us to want to follow you, move us to change, move us to get help, move us to recalibrate ourselves to really serve you and love you. God, we love you. We pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. 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 As I have loved you in John 13. And for the next five weeks, we're going to be going through John 13 to 17, so you can study up. And my first point today is Jesus loves to the end. And you're going to see that in this verse. Jesus loved to the very end. His love begins with the birth that we celebrated, and it ends with the cross. And we're going to look at a day 24 hours approximately before he went to the cross and died. It says, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And I love that picture, John writing this book 30 years later. Maybe he was out on the island of Patmos thinking about his life. That we're going to read about Jesus washing their feet, but I don't think he was talking about washing the feet there. He was talking about Jesus loved us all the way to the cross and beyond. It's good to see Chris Ventura here today, too. I just looked up and saw him there. We're happy to have you back, man. Dodged another one, huh? Incredible. We're so grateful to have you here. Um, What was I saying? But he loved us to the end, and John, looking back on his life, saying that he loved me not just to the cross, but all the way through my life, that he's out there on an island by himself just reflecting on how awesome God has been to him. I pray that you can be that person. That you look back on how God loved me, not just now, but he's going to love me all the way to the end in my life. It said the evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. That this was such a thing out of the Jewish culture that a rabbi, a Jewish rabbi, would never wash the feet of his disciples. I'm sure that the disciples may have washed his feet, They didn't, but they might have. But I can guarantee you they weren't going to go wash each other's feet because right before this meal, they were arguing about who was the greatest. So they're walking into the meal arguing about the greatest. And you know when you go to a party and you show up like right on time and you have an argument on the way over there? And you're like, well, we're we're late. We got to go into the party. And we're like, okay, let's get happy. We got to get in here. And you come in and you're just kind of like, out of sorts. And so imagine them, they're coming in, they're like, man, I can't believe that guy, Peter, he thinks he's so great, and James and John, they're arguing with each other. And then Jesus disarms the room by slowly taking taking off his coat and washing their feet one by one. Jesus initiates to meet the needs that they had at that time. The needs really had not much to do with the dirt. Jesus wanted to send that message and his love and the message of what greatness truly is. A message of humility. And I pray that even as we start this year, that we start it with a message of humility. How can I serve? How can I put a towel around my waist and serve you? How can you serve in your, ho- in your home, in your work, with your family group and those that are close to you? How can I be like Christ and love to the very end? And on the same way, we also have to let people serve us. That sometimes we think of serving that I'm the one who's serving, but other times we need to also let people serve us and make our needs known too so that we can allow others to serve. I love this scripture in Peter, 1 Peter 5.5. 5, he says, all of you be submissive to one another and clothed with humility. And one of the other translations more literally says, 
Peter wrote, wrap the apron of humility around yourself. And I pray that we can have that spirit of just let me wrap humility around me so we can serve each other like Christ. Let's not worry about who's the greatest and who deserves what and who's better than who, but let's all serve in that same way. As Jesus says, now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. That wasn't on my list of New Year's resolutions. I'm not sure that was on anyone else's, but that's a good one to put on there. How can I wash one another's feet? How can I serve? How can I meet needs this year? He says, now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you do them. And I love that spirit. If we all had that heart of Christ, all of our needs would get met by God and by one another. And Jesus is about to talk about some really difficult things. He he already told them that he's going to the cross. He's talking about being betrayed. And they're worried about who's the greatest. This was not a real easy meal. There was a lot of suffering going on during this meal as people were worried, people were concerned. And what I realized of why I was kind of like this with the new year is because it was hard a couple years. It's been a hard couple years for all of us. So for some, even more hard, way more hard than mine. But thinking like, man, at the end of last year, I figured by the time we got to this year, we're going to be like smooth sailing again. It's going to be like butter. Everyone's going to get along. We're going to just like cruise with Jesus. And I realized that hard is not bad. Hard is not bad. These guys, it it wasn't easy for them. They were going to be persecuted. They were going to watch Jesus die. Paul, John, as he's writing this, is alone in prison on an island. That's not butter. That's hard. That's lonely. And yet God sometimes leads us into heart so that we can change so that we can learn trust, so that we can not be worried about how great we are, but we can learn to be focused on him. I pray that this year that you won't push back from the heart, that you'll embrace Jesus as you go through the heart together, that he has been training us and teaching us, even as a church, how to love more deeply, how to persevere how to not feel like we're always in control. That God, let God be God. Let's love each other as we go into this new year. And I, I've been, as I was putting this together, the, this song came on that many of you have probably heard called Take Me Back by Maverick City. This guy, Dante Bo. And it's, he says, and I hear the Lord say, he's talking about getting back to his first love. And I hear the Lord say, if you ask, he will do it. I hear the Lord say, if you ask, he will do it. He's not wanting to hide and wanting any distance. So I hear tonight there's a fresh start, and it's only the beginning. I pray that as you start this week and this year that you have a fresh start, that you ask God to change you, to help you if you're feeling hesitant or faithless or scared or like it's hard that you'll ask God to change your heart and help you to have a love that will persevere like Jesus to the very end. Amen? Amen. Point number two, the one whom Jesus loves. And I love this picture of John just leaning back against Jesus. And the reason I love it is because it's a really uncomfortable picture. (laughs) Right? If you can just picture yourself, like picturing Joel just going on Marcus and just putting his head on his shoulder right there, like, like that's uncomfortable. (laughs) 
Like there was a love there that he was so at peace. Sorry, guys. <laughs> he was so at peace. He was so unashamed and un, unhindered with Christ that he could just lean back against him. That in writing the letter that he could refer to himself as the one whom Jesus loves. And that's my prayer for all of us is that we can have that kind of relationship with Christ, that we can lean our head back on him and just be with him. We don't have to do anything for him. We, we do stuff for him, but we can just be with him. Amen. That you can be the one whom Jesus loves. You already are. But whether you will accept that is up to you. You already are the one that Jesus died for. You're the one that he loved with all of his heart. And I love that picture of John as an old man looking back. Man, I've been loved my entire life by Christ. And I know that many of you feel that same way as you've walked with Christ for years and years and years. And all those trials, you've been loved the entire time and blessed. In John 13, 21, he says, After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, a disciple whom Jesus loved, loved that line, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. This was a hard time. This was a hard time. Not just for the disciples, but for Jesus, too. I can imagine, I don't know that he was shaking, but I can just picture the intensity as he was thinking about being betrayed. Thinking about how he had walked with Judas for three years and how as he dipped the bread in that he had loved them so well that no one knew it was him. And many of you have thought about that before. But dipping the bread and the bread representing Christ's body that he was about ready to lay down for all of them. The one whom Jesus loves. Even through difficulty, through betrayal, through challenges. I pray that you can say that with me to the very end. That the one whom Jesus loved, yes, that's you, but that's also me. I know that's where God wants for us. In John 13, 38, Peter asked, Lord, I'll, why can't I follow you now? I will die for you. It wasn't just Judas that was going to betray him here. It was all of them. Sometimes we can look at people that really turn their back on Christ and we can have that kind of spirit like, man, look at that Judas over there. And we can forget how many times we've done the same. How many times we've run away. How many times we've hid or, or tried to avoid. And how much we need the same grace that we can often refuse to someone that's maybe someone like Judas. Judas. Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Man, this dinner was not, it's getting worse. This is getting harder. <laughs> Peter, when Jesus was washing his feet, wasn't happy. Jesus, you can't wash your feet. You're not my servant. I'm, I'm your servant. I should be washing your feet. And then when Jesus, he, 
Jesus, he sees Jesus is going to keep going with the feet, and he says, well, then you've got to wash my hands and my head too. Peter didn't like the feet, and he didn't, he, he didn't like what Jesus was doing. He didn't like this whole situation. He didn't like that they weren't going to take over with swords. He didn't like that Jesus was going to go to the cross. He didn't like that Jesus was serving, and he probably didn't like that he was called to do the same. Can you relate? Sometimes we don't like what Jesus is doing. We don't want to go the place he wants us to go. That's not my plan, Jesus. This isn't supposed to go this way. I mean, I signed up for blessing Christianity that when I got baptized, everything was just going to be perfect. I didn't really sign up for that, but that was kind of what I was hoping for. And yet Peter had to learn grace through betrayal. He had to learn, he had to be reinstated. He was the leader, but he had a hard time with that. He wanted to be the, the best disciple ever. And yet he needed to be restored. But he also never forgot that time when he fell. I love this from the same song. When the storm's out on the ocean and the violent wind gets to blowing, take me back, all the way back, take me back to my first love. That we're all going to be out on the water and we're going to be sinking in. Jesus, what are you doing? Why am I out here? That's when we need to pray to him to get us back to our first love. To pull us up. To help us to be grateful. Help us to remember that we don't deserve all these blessings that we get to remember how grateful and clean we felt the day we got baptized, the day that we started following Christ. Let's never forget that we and you are the one that Jesus loved. And finally, love one another. I don't know about you, but as I was finishing, after I finished this sermon, I walked into the living room, I said, Man, I feel like I just preached this sermon on Christmas. <laughs> Love one another. When you go back and look at Jesus, how many times does he say love one another? He says a lot of times. I'm sure that the disciples were like, Jesus, come on, man. How many times are you going to tell me the same thing? As many times as you need it. Over and over and over. This isn't just do your neighbor no harm like the Old Testament taught or love your neighbor as yourself, but to love your neighbor as I have loved them. He says, a new command I give you. I'm not sure it was very new because he said love one another a lot, but the, the part about loving like him is new. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. That Jesus set a new standard of love. And many of us have experienced this and lived this and given this to others. And yet he still sells us to continue to love like me. Continue to forgive like me. Continue to serve and bless others. Don't ex not even expecting things back. I love scriptures like that where it says he sends the rain on the righteous and the wicked. God blesses people that could care less about him. That's where it gets a lot harder for me when there's no thank you, there's no acknowledgement, there's no attaboys, there's nothing. It's just me being like Christ. And maybe the person won't see it. He says some people will see it. They'll look at us and see our love. To continue to realize that you bring Christ with you. That church starts when you leave. 
For most people, when they get to experience the love of Christ, that is church for most people. Being around you and being around me. It's not just people that get paid to lead or be Christians. It's, it's all of us bringing Jesus to people. When two or three together, so I am there. I pray that we can continue to bring people to church, which is awesome. We love to have friends come, but I pray that we can continue to bring church to people. That we can be open to the people that God is leading us to. That it's about relationships. It's about people that God wants us to connect with in our families, in the community, at work. And I pray that this year we can be open to that. We can see that God is using us. Now, I don't know if you're very familiar with chiasms. I think a lot of us have been exposed to that through the Bema podcast where they say one thing in the beginning and they say the same thing at the end and then they say something in the middle and that's like the most important thing. I kind of took a little liberty with the chiasm here, but it says that Jesus will love them to the very end in verse 1. And then in verse 34, he says to love one another as I have loved you. And I'm calling it in the middle. He says that John was the one whom Jesus loved. And so there's a theme that goes through this entire chapter, actually these five chapters of love. And I pray that that can be the theme of every single thing that you and I do. That we do it through a heart and lens of love. That we have a heart to love everyone that we come in touch with. As we take our communion together, I pray that it, my prayer is simple. That we can leave thinking about who can I love today? Who can I pray for? Whose feet can I wash? Who can I encourage this week? And allow God to lead you. Imagine if all of us just thought about who could I love? Not how can I be loved, but some of us, we sit in our groups and everybody's got dirty feet and we all just look at each other. Start, start with the person next to you. Start with the person in your family group, start with the person in your household. Who can I love this week? How can I connect? And maybe you're connecting online. Maybe you're connecting here. But talk to each other. Encourage each other. Reach out. If you've gone like more than a week without talking to a disciple, like reset your system. Recalibrate. Throw away whatever it is that's getting in the way and start loving one another. As we take communion, I'm going to go back to our theme scripture. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. He says it again. Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And Jesus lived that to the end. And we're grateful for that. I want to close with the words of the song. He says, when it was all simple, thinking back when he first came to faith, and tr trusting was easy. When it was all simple and loving was easy. And then he remembers back. He says, I will never forget the night you saved me. I will never forget the night you freed me. And I pray that as we take communion that we can never forget. That we can recommit our love to him, to one another, and we can decide to love and serve and pray for one another this week and even today. Let's pray and we'll take our communion. Father, we thank you so much for this time. We thank you for Jesus. Thank you that during a very difficult time that he was thinking about others. That he was wanting to meet their needs. That he wasn't fearful, that they were so prideful, but he knew they would finally get it, what it means to be a humble leader. God, I thank you that uh, you have loved us from the very beginning. And I pray that we can uh, receive that love today 
and be, be, uh, be moved by that, God. Thank you that you have given us the love to share with one another. I pray that you bless our church here, bless our relationships, God, that we can love one another like you loved us. Thank you so much for the cross that defines love, that shows love, that helps us to see how much you love us. Thank you for his body that represented by this bread and his blood represented by this juice. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.